वेलकम टू फार्माकोलॉजी लेक्चर्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अबाउट केस स्टडीज नाउ ड्यूरिंग एन ऑप्थेलमिक सर्जिकल प्रोसीजर ओके सर्जिकल प्रोसीजर द सर्जन वांटेड टू कंस्ट्रिक्ट द पीपल ओके इट मींस माइटिक ड्रग हाउएवर ही एक्सीडेंटली इन्फ्यूज द ड्रग व्हिच कॉज्ड डायलेशन मेड्रियासिस Now, which of the following drug does it causes mydriasis? Now, muscarinic agonist such as acetylcholine, pilocarpine, and bethenicol. All of these are muscarinic agonist. So, what will they do? They will constrict, contract the circular muscles of iris sphincter and cause contraction of the pupil meiosis. Whereas, muscarinic antagonist. tropicamide this is antagonist muscarinic antagonist they prevent the contraction of the circular muscle of iris and they will cause mydriasis okay next sarin is a nerve gas that is an organophosphate cholinesterase inhibitor inhibitor of the enzyme which agent could be used as an antidote to sarin poisoning now since it is a cholinesterase inhibitor you know if it inhibits this enzyme acetylcholine levels will be increased if acetylcholine levels are increased it will cause into cholinergic crisis through the activation of muscarinic and nicotinic receptors now most symptoms of are mediated by muscarinic receptor therefore the muscarinic antagonist now these receptor antagonist will work as an antidote and uh, now pilocarpine carbacol physostigine all of these are agonist and they will worsen the condition so atropine which is an antagonist it will serve as an antidote next a patient with alzheimer disease okay need treatment for overactive bladder which are, which is the drug of choice for this patient now it is the patient is of alzheimer disease you have to remember this and for overactive now darifenacin solifenacin tolteridine all of these are used in oab overactive bladder prospium prospium we have studied its chemistry if we see it is a quaternary ammonium compound so due to its this structure its minimum minimum amount will cross bbb these three can cross blood brain barrier so if they cause cross blood brain barrier they will worsen the condition for alzheimer disease dementia so we will choose for this patient prospium now a patient with asthma was pres- prescribed beta 2 agonist for acute relief of bronchospasm but did not respond to the treatment which drug is the next option which one is the next choice benzotropine ipratropium oxybutynin and physostigmine now as you know uh, in the bronchial tissue major receptors are muscarinic and adrenergic beta 2 m and beta 2 receptors so muscarinic activation will cause bronchoconstriction and beta 2 receptor activation will cause dilation dilation and constriction therefore direct or indirect su- such as physostigmine which is an indirect agonist it will cause bronchoconstriction and worsen the condition so this is not the choice of the drug ipratropium is an antagonist you know this is an antagonist 
and it acts on the muscarinic receptors of the smooth bronchus bronchial smooth muscles and it will come cause dilation so it will relieve the spasmodic condition who are not responsive to beta 2 agents so we'll give ibrutopium now benzodiazepine is used for parkinson disease okay here we know only two uh, uses therapeutic uses were there for parkinson disease or extra pyramidal effects benzodiazepine and oxybutynin you know this is used for oab we have studied in previous case study now a 50 year old male patient who is non compliant with medication was recently diagnosed with copd his physician would prescribe an inhaled anticholinergic that is dose once or twice daily which drug is most appropriate for this patient now uh, if he wants to give once or twice daily it means he has to choose lama long acting muscarinic agonist antagonist sorry the patient has to inhale the medication one to two times okay so it needs long acting now triatropium is a lama whereas ipratropium is you know sama short acting muscarinic antagonist atropine and prospium they are they are muscarinic antagonist but are not indicated for copd and they are not available in inhalation form which is the most effective drug for motion sickness we have studied this yes all muscarinic antagonist okay anticholinergic drug are useful in mus- uh, sickness drug if you study theoretically but practically clinically scopolamine is the most effective for preventing uh, motion sickness tropica made only ophthalmic and uh, fesofredine is used for oab So the answer here is scopolamine. Next, which is correct regarding ganglion blocking drugs? Blockade of sympathetic ganglia could result in reduced BP. Blockade of parasympathetic ganglia could result in reduced heart rate. Nicotine is a non-depolarizing ganglion blocker. Atropine is a non-depolarizing ganglion blocker. Okay. Now selective blockade. in theory of the sympathetic ganglion will reduce nor uh, sympathetic blockade will reduce the release of norepinephrine will be reduced and therefore this will cause reduction in the heart rate and bp so selective blockade in if selective blockade in parasympathetic you will see decrease of acetylcholine and increase in the heart rate so this is not the option now nicotine is an agonist and at nicotinic receptors they will produce a depolarizing block in the ganglia okay atropine is a muscarinic antagonist and it has no effect on nicotinic receptors found in the ganglia so option is a which drug is useful in the treatment of sinus bradycardia atropine okay sinus bradycardia is a condition where heart rate is below normal bradycardia and often caused by increased vagal tone uh, vagus tone is increased by when acetylcholine is increased in the sa node it will act on muscarinic receptors to reduce the heart rate so a muscarinic antagonist such as atropine which is an antagonist it is useful in this situation to bring the heart rate back to normal succinylcholine cisatracurium they are nicotinic antagonist okay they are nicotinic antagonist and neostigmine is a cholinesterase inhibitor and it can if it inhibits it means it will lead to more acetylcholine if it inhibits the enzyme so it will worsen the condition now an icu patient with severe lung injury requires a neuromuscular blocking agent to assist in ventilator 
management. He has liver disease and is currently in renal failure. Which neuromuscular block is the best choice for the patient? Pan in our cystracurium, pancurium, veocurium. Now pan curonium is really renally elim eliminated, okay? Through renal. Veocurium and rocurinium they are hepatic. Hepatic hepatic elimination they have. So they both are uh, dependent on these two elimination whereas cystracurium it is cleared by organ independent mechanism which we have studied or uh, it was called Hoffman elimination so for this patient where uh, liver is compromised renal is compromised we will choose cystracurium for uh, management now where where would you expect to see the first return of function of skeletal muscles following discontinuation of a non depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent now when we administer a neuromuscular blocker facial facial muscles are impacted first pupils are not controlled by skeletal muscles and not effective not affected fingers and arms would be next okay fingers and arms are next with the diaphragm function lost last now function returns in the opposite direction okay so opposite means this diaphragm was the last so now it will become the first so the option b is correct thank you if you have any questions you can come uh, write in the comment section